Hello, uh, my name is Jonah Bryant. I'm going to be presenting today on the chapter 7 and chapter 8, the material and binding jetting process. So first off, with the material jetting process, a uh, quick overview. A material jetting is primarily an additive manufacturing process. It relies on heating up a material, mainly a uh, polymer or metal, to a relatively high temperature to reduce the viscosity, and then extruding it in a rapid series of droplets onto a bed, and then most of the time it is followed by a UV light that helps cure the material faster. Um, essentially, it's used to print out various 3D objects, such as prototypes for different machines or tool parts, and it is used a lot to uh, test out different types of, uh, different types, that basically test out different prototypes before they invest in a full, you know, casting process. Because with material jetting, it is a lot cheaper to uh, print something out of polymer than it is to go through the whole process of casting a full metal part, just, just to test it and have it not work. Uh, some of the main applications focus around that polymer plastic printing, uh, basically because the with the polymer plastic printing, you can save a lot more money and a lot more time. Uh, some of the problems with this process, uh, basically fully heating the material can be an issue. If the material is not fully heated, then you run into viscosity problems and you don't have good droplets and therefore you get a part that you cannot use. Another issue that is common with this process is clogs, uh, especially at the tip of the nozzle. Uh, essentially, this is taking a material and extruding it through a very, very small nozzle to get a fine and controlled droplet rate. And because of that, uh, that nozzle can clog very easily if the material becomes, you know, if it cools down within that nozzle at all, it will most of the time become clogged. And that can cause buildup and backup and all kinds of different issues. Uh, droplet formation is another one that is a major issue with this process. Essentially, if you're not getting good droplet formation, you're not able to control your print as well. So you end up with, you know, you end up with variances in tolerance, you end up with vacancies, you end up with a bunch of different problems. So the droplet formation is very important. And again, with the viscosity, uh, one, of the pro one of the problems you've run into with the viscosity is that, especially with polymers, if you heat them up to a certain point and then leave them at that heated temperature for too long, you can get pro-polymers or pre-polymer form, pre -polymer formation inside of that polymer, which then causes, you know, little tiny buildups, which again lead to the clogs. So it, viscosity is a major issue with this process in general. Some of the more practical uses of material jetting it's found its main success in the prototyping industry, which allows for rapid manufacturing and testing of different tools and parts. But uh, another place that this uh, process is also heavily used is in the electronics industry, where it actually uses molten metal that is jetted out onto circuit boards. This allows for you know much faster and automated process of creating small and complex circuit boards, which means that you're able to pump out a lot more product in a much more efficient manner and a much more uh, cost-effective manner than having a person do. Uh, moving on to the binder jetting, a uh, quick overview of that. Uh, it's similar to material jetting in the sense that it too is an additive manufacturing process, but it differs in the way that it actually creates the parts. Uh, in this process, a binding agent is sprayed into a powdered bed of the material. The binder then bound, uh, bonds the powder together with each layer, and the part is slowly manufactured up like that. Uh, this process allows for more controlled, uh, a more controlled flow since the binding agent doesn't need to be heated. It maintains a constant viscosity and is less likely to close the nozzle. Nozzle, and so you can see here on the picture that I've included. This is just a quick idea. So with each layer that uh, is formed, basically. The uh, binding agent is sprayed down, uh, bonds onto the uh, powder, 
and then the CNC operation comes through and cuts it into the shape of the uh, part that's cutting and then it will pull up and that powdered roller will roll another layer of powder onto there and then the process will repeat and repeat and repeat each time that build tank will go down and the powdered feed tank will be pressed up to allow for a new layer of powder to go through. Um, some of the advantages and disadvantages with this process. Uh, some of the advantages is that it doesn't require high energy to heat the binder since the binding agent can just be sprayed at relatively room temperature. Uh, it doesn't require lasers or any toxic materials to uh, use this process. Uh, again, it's relatively inexpensive and fast. Some of the first uh, binder jetting processes was done with plaster and water. It uh, doesn't require any support structures, which is nice because that decreases the amount of finishing time that you have to spend uh, cutting off those support structures. And it allows for a relatively high quality print to be made. Uh, the disadvantages with this process is that you have that added step of adding a new powdered bed with each layer and it slows down the overall process. And due to the part being created basically inside of that powdered bed, uh, the parts will typically have a poor surface finish, more of a porous, more porosity along the surface uh, than compared to the material jetting. Some of the practical uses real quick, uh, seen to be used in many different applications, especially for full scale prototypes. Uh, another big advantage is that it allows for the manufacture of kinetic joints. So you can create these complex joints like the one pictured here and just be able to spray out the excess powdered material very easily with, you know, compressed air. Uh, it's also heavily used in creating large sand casting cores and different types of molds. And it can also be used for low cost fabrication of metal parts as well. In summary, uh, each process has its own advantages and disadvantages. However, both have the opportunity to change this landscape when it comes to additive manufacturing. Both of these processes are relatively new still to the manufacturing world, and I believe that with further testing and continued development, these processes could have a much greater, play a much greater role in the world we live in today. Uh, thank you very much.